الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد Welcome to a new episode of Ramadan Refresher and this is our daily uh, reminder during Ramadan and uh, we can move on inshallah to a new section which is باب فضل قيام الليل it's a section on the merit of uh, praying at night but I, ha- I want to point out something before we start there are a few words here so let's start with قيام الليل and we have صلاة الليل and we have uh, تراويح and we have تهجد Wh- what is the difference? So let's start with Qiyam al-Layl. Qiyam al-Layl means anything, any acts of worship that you do during the night. It could be praying at night, it could be reciting Quran, it could be making dhikr. That's generally all of that co- can be called Qiyam al-Layl or sometimes it, refer- it is referred to as Ihya al-Layl. As the hadith of Aisha, the Prophet ﷺ, Ahya Laylahu. The Prophet ﷺ would revive the nights during the last 10 nights. So all of this is considered to be Qiyam al-Layl. You can do dhikr, you can recite Quran, you can pray, um, acts of worship that you do during the night. But we have uh, also At-Taraweeh. At-Taraweeh refers to the prayer that we pray um, at night in Ramadan. But in the last few hundred years it has been referring to, has been used specifically for um, praying at night in Ramadan uh, in the early parts of the night in the early parts of the night and tahajjud has become used recently in the last few hundred years as well to refer to the if we pray taraweeh and then we take a long break then we come back again to pray towards the end of the night people in the last few hundred years started to call this tahajjud but tahajjud meaning means praying at night generally speaking but it has b- has taken this uh, particular use and there's nothing ne- necessarily harmful about this, but just w- we needed to point that out at the beginning. So he quotes, Imam Nawi here quotes a few verses. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا In Surah Al-Isra, Allah says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and in, at the night, tahajjad, pray at night. نَافِلَةً لَكَ Voluntary, something extra, more than the obligation. Uh, so that your Lord will... Uh, Set or resurrect you on the day of judgment and give you al maqam al mahmud, the very special status that will be given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa qala taala, tatajafa junubhum an al madajir, and their sides leave their uh, beds, and this is in reference to uh, the people who worship Allah subhanahu wa taala, the righteous people, that although they feel the need to uh, go to, to bed and sleep but they yet the love of Allah uh, pulls them towards worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at night uh, praying, standing in his presence why? because they love that they find so much joy, comfort uh, serenity and peace in that so they give it preference over the sleep that their physical bodies feel the need for and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, كَانُوا قَلِيلًا مِّنَ اللَّيْلِ مَعِي هَجَعُونَ Allah describes the people of Jannah that they would not, uh, they would just go to sleep for a little bit at night. Why? Because they would sp- spend a lot of time standing in Allah's presence. This might be some, it might be puzzling for some people. They might say, what about their health? Why don't, don't these people take care of their health? Etc. We know that generally speaking, according to the, um, the guidelines of Islam that a person is supposed to take care of their health but depending on the spiritual growth the level of spiritual growth of the person by the way they get to do things that other people cannot handle even physically and that's true so the Prophet ﷺ would stand up uh, in prayer for a long time many hours during the night and yet this did not compromise his health so here if you want to look at that, it, it just shows that when a person has so much faith and uh, and they have come a long way in their in their in their spiritual and religious journey, they actually get to a point where these moments standing in the presence of Allah at night would actually give them so much comfort and peace, and that would reflect on their physiological state. 
And again, this is something not understood by people who just get to push themselves to pray. It is by people who truly get to enjoy uh, their prayer. And I've, I've come across some, some studies uh, that have been done in the last couple of decades about even people uh, who actually do meditation. People who wake up early so they don't get, f let's say, they don't get their eight hours of sleep. They get up early but they do meditation instead. They actually, some studies figured out that uh, the impact of these hours of meditation, or not hours of meditation, but maybe half an hour or an hour of meditation, is actually equal to sometimes the positive impact in the body is equal to six or eight hours of sleep. And here we're talking about medita meditation, but le when, when it comes to the prayer, there's much more than meditation. It's, mu it's, a, it's a much deeper practice than meditation. So this is why when a person is connected to Allah spiritually, and we know there's a connection between the soul and the body, and uh, there is a healing that comes from the soul to the body. So when a person is really standing in the presence of Allah, in a state of true connection and deep connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is going to have a, so they are functioning, so it's a different ball game altogether. That's what, what, I w what I'm trying to say here. So this is just to clarify or explain away this kind of concern that some people I know have so it works with different people differently so you have to sort of um, listen to your body what I would say and uh, seek more uh, spiritual growth and, um, and and work accordingly and as uh, the more the, the, the more growth the person achieves then uh, the more they can do let's start with the ahadith وعن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقوم من الليل حتى تتفطر قدماه فقلت له لما تصنع هذا يا رسول الله وقد غفر لك ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر قال أفلا أكون عبدا شكورا متفق عليه selected by Bukhari and Muslim this from uh, on the authority of Aisha رضي الله عنها she said the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to pray at night until his heels the skin of his heels would crack. The skin of his feet would crack. So I said to him, O oh Messenger of Allah, why, why do you do this? When Allah has forgiven all of your sins, uh, future, future sins and past sins, he said, shall I, not, shall I not be a grateful or a thankful servant? Collect, collected, collected by Bukhari and Muslim. <coughs> and what it shows how much joy the Prophet ﷺ found in Salatul Layl, in praying at night. To the point that Aisha radiallahu anha thought that this was physically uh, too much overwhelming for the Prophet ﷺ. But again, due to the high level of spiritual growth the Prophet ﷺ had, he, he told her, shall I, shall I not be a thankful servant? And don't think, don't look at that as if it's a chore, as if the Prophet ﷺ was just pushing himself and abusing his body to do that. He was actually, uh, I would say, he was flying on on a, he was flying on the wind of spiritual connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And we know we we know this at a level that maybe there is there's an example that we can relate to, and doesn't have to be in a completely spiritual, but it's actually related to that. You know, when 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 the spirit of someone is high, they can put up so much physically and mentally that a person who lacks the same level of morale or spir spirit would not be able to do. You find the person with a low spirit, that their body would crush. Whereas the person who has um, a stronger mind and a higher spirit, those people can actually put up with much more and they can, do, they can exert themselves even more physically. And they can sort of harness more physical power. And this is what is called the body and mind connection. And obviously part of this is spiritual because the mind of its own doesn't have any, uh, any power but that power or that strength comes originally from the soul. So imagine the impact of a spiritual growth on the body. So you want to look at the example of the Prophet ﷺ, not from the place that I am in or you are in. The Prophet ﷺ was acting from a higher place spiritually and that enabled his body to handle way more than what we can handle. Actually his body would flourish on that and would be nourished with that and we, kn we know from an authentic hadith from the Prophet ﷺ that he used to fast 
a few days consecutively without breaking his fast, without opening his fast as ma at, at Maghrib. But he advised the companions and he actually prohibited them from doing that. He said to them, don't do that. You guys can't handle it. Your bodies can't handle it. So he said, I have Allah who feeds me and nourishes me. And this is definitely spiritual nourishment that leaks into physical state as well. So when we look at the example of the Prophet ﷺ like that, uh, don't look at him as someone who's abusing his body. On the contrary, he's someone who's acting from a higher spiritual state. And thus, that's his point of balance. But for us, we definitely that's not our point of balance, so we won't be able to handle it. So this is why everyone has to really be sensitive to the signals coming from their body, coming from their heart. And they have to take it easy upon themselves until they spiritually grow. And again, they do that from a higher spiritual place according to what they can handle, according to the level of growth that they themselves achieve. But it shows the Prophet ﷺ was finding so much joy in standing in the presence of Allah and being thankful. Being thankful, meaning he's someone who enjoyed that connection with Allah, someone who enjoyed expressing his heart to Allah and expressing his gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it shows you a secret into spiritual growth and this is gratitude gratitude is a, is a is a is a key component to spiritual growth and to the life of the heart wa an ali radiyallahu anhu anna an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talaqahu wa fatimah layla fa qala ala tusalliyan muttafaq alayhi talaqahu atahu layla this hadith is collected also by Al-Bukhari and Muslim from Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu anhu that the Prophet وسلم, uh, came to them at night and he said, don't you guys pray? Like at night, don't you like have any night prayer? Don't you perform any night prayer? And this is a recommendation and encouragement from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it shows that it's not befitting of someone who's connected to Allah to leave Salat al-Layl or the prayer at night altogether. It's good that a person has a share, even if it's five minutes. Even if it's just five minutes, two rata. And if, if you start to do that and uh, consistently uh, observe it, slowly, slowly you will find that five minutes is not enough. Your, your heart will start to ask for more. So you'll start doing 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour. And sometimes you can't get enough of that. And the, the growth ha has to be gradual and natural and organic. وعن سالم سالم بن عبد الله بن عمر بن الخطاب عن أبي رضي الله عنهما عن عنهم عن أبيه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال نعم الرجل عبد عبد الله لو كان يصلي من الليل قال سالم فكان عبد الله بعد ذلك لا ينام من الليل إلا قليلا متفق عليه this hadith is collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim from the grandson of Umar ibn Khattab, Salim, who's the son of Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab. Uh, Salim narrates about his father that the, pro the Messenger وسلم, said, what a good man Abdullah is, meaning Abdullah ibn Umar, what a good man he is. Had he just observed the night prayer? So ever since, ever since Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu anhumah, would sleep very little at night and he would pray most of it. وعن عبد الله ابن عمرو بن العاص قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا عبد الله لا تكن مثل فلان كان يقوم الليل فترك قيام الليل متفق عليه. Collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim from Abdullah ibn Amr ibn العاص. He said Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said O oh Abdullah do not be like so and so. He used to pray at night and then he left it. And uh, some of the scholars, they actually say that this refers to Abdullah ibn Umar, the, as the, is in the previous hadith. And ever since, Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhumah, would observe the night prayer and he would sleep very little at night. And it shows that the Prophet وسلم, when he felt someone was special, someone was of, of a great character, he felt that there was something missing if this, prayer, if this person did not observe the night prayer. وعن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه قال ذكر عند النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رجل نام ليلة حتى أصبح قال ذاك رجل بال الشيطان في أذنيه أو قال في في أذنه متفق عليه collected by البخاري and Muslim from عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه he said 
A man was mentioned to the Prophet ﷺ that this man slept all the night, throughout, through the night, till Fajr time. The Prophet ﷺ made a comment, he said, such a person, uh, shaitan has urinated in the ears of this person. Shaitan has urinated. And obviously, this could be a reality, and most likely this is actually a reality, but it's a non-physical world, right? Uh, and it has an impact, and most likely it has a negative spiritual impact. And here you're talking about shaitan urinating in the ear of a person. And you can imagine what kind of impact this is going to leave uh, the person uh, the person with. وَعَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم قال يعقد الشيطان على قافية رأس أحدكم إذا هو نام ثلاث عقد يضرب على كل عقدة عليك ليل طويل فارقد فإن استيقظ فذكر الله تعالى إن حلت عقدة فإن توضأ إن حلت عقدة فإن صلى إن حلت عقده كلها فأصبح نشيطا طيب النفس وإلا أصبح خبيث النفس كسلا متفق عليه قافية الرأس آخره collected by البخاري المسلم from أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه that Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said that shaitan uh, ties three knots at the back of the head of each person when this person goes to sleep and he says upon each knot that there's a, a long night ahead of you, so just go to sleep, relax. So if the person wakes up at night, during the night, and mentions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one knot will be undone. And if the person makes wudu, a second knot is undone. And if the person prays, the third knot is undone, so thus all of the three knots are gone now. So the person wakes up fresh, full of energy, and with a beautiful soul. But otherwise, the person would wake up with a, with a, uh, a tarnished, blemished, uh, impurified soul, and the person would be lazy. He would not have high levels of energy. And this shows that what we just said about the prayer that when a person uh, the connection between the soul and the body the when we perform acts of worship truly as we should do from our hearts and they feed into our hearts they actually have an impact on uh, the our levels of energy on the strength of our our bodies and our state so this hadith is just an example of this some scholars say this hadith talks about Salat al-Fajr, but actually many scholars say, like the Imam al-Bukhari and here Imam al-Nawawi, they actually say this actually applies to Salat al-Layl. And this makes us take Salat al-Layl or praying at night seriously. And as I said, all you need to do is at least five minutes, two rakah, two short rakah, five minutes, that's it. Start with that and then it will carry you through that. So, so it shows that Salat al-Layl is a or praying at night is a very important thing. <coughs> and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we have uh, collected by the Imam Muslim on the authority of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu that Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said um, the best afdalu as-siyami ba'da Ramadan shahru Allahi al-muharram wa afdalu salati بعد الفريضة صلاة الليل رواه مسلم collected by Imam Muslim from Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه that the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said the best fasting after Ramadan is fasting the month of Muharram during the first month of the Hijri calendar and the best prayer after the five obligatory prayers is praying at night praying at night so it's Salat al-Layl, praying at night is more important even than the Rawatib, the Sunnah that we pray with the five daily prayers. Salat al-Layl is better in the sight of Allah than those. Now, there's no trade-off that I have to leave those to uh, the, the, the Sunnah, the Sunnah or the Sunnah to pray at night. It's better to observe all of them. But if you are going to choose, then the Prophet ﷺ says uh, the best Salah after the obligatory one is praying at night. وعن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال صلاة الليل مثنى مثنى فإذا خفت الصبح فأوتر بواحدة متفق عليه. 
Uh, on the authority of Amr ibn Khattab, of, of Ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma, this is collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, that the Prophet وسلم, said, uh, praying at night is two rak'ah units. So two rak'ah, you know, you make taslim. Two rak'ah, you make taslim. Two rak'ah, you make taslim. Then if you fear that it is Fajr time, is going to fall, then you pray, you, you seal them with one, which is the witter. وعنه قال كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يصلي من الليل مثنى مثنى ويوتر بركة متفق عليه. Also collected by Bukhari and Muslim from Abdullah ibn Umar رضي الله عنهما that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم at night would pray two units at a time, two units, then two units, then two units. Then he would complete that or seal that with one ركة which would make them an odd number. وعن أنس رضي الله عنه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يفطر من الشهر حتى نظن أن لا يصوم أن لا يصوم منه ويصوم حتى نظن أن لا يفطر منه شيئا وكان وكان لا تشاء أن تراه من الليل مصليا إلا رأيته ولا نائما إلا رأيته رواه البخاري collected by البخاري from Anas رضي الله عنه the personal assistant of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم used to fast he used to fast so often in a month that they, we would say he fasted a whole month. This is outside of Ramadan. And sometimes he would not fast to a point that we would say he didn't fast any day of the month. And some nights you would, you would see that he would pray that we would say he never goes to sleep. And sometimes you would find that he goes to sleep to a point that we would say he never prays at night. Meaning the Prophet ﷺ would alternate his state. Sometimes he would pray most of the night and sometimes uh, he would pray a little bit of the night, but not the whole night, like I say a third of the night. Uh, and in, in, in very like uh, unique cases, like the last 10 nights in Ramadan, he would pray the whole night. So this was the way of the Prophet ﷺ. So I think it's, to, uh, it's enough today for, for us. Uh, we might have just one more segment, inshallah, in the series on Ramadan and uh, the fast and Qiyam al-Layl. And then afterwards we will go back, back to Kitab al-Adab or the Book of Etiquette and uh, Manners. So we see here the importance of Salat al-Layl, praying at night. And Ramadan is an, uh, is an opportunity. Alhamdulillah, most people are used to praying Taraweeh. And uh, it's a challenge for many people uh, this year as they are not praying at the masjid and this I know this is a challenge for m many people because people again we and let's let's sort of uh, point this out that we have become very dependent on the services by imams and by masjid for our our religious and spiritual well-being and yes sometimes we might need a person of knowledge to teach us or to guide us or to answer our questions and to be in congregation to pray but we should not be dependent on that, that when it's not, we are unable to pray the masjid like the circumstances we're living in nowadays, that we can't even perform the salah. We can't even uh, perform taraweeh. This shows that we, we have grown over dependent on the services offered by a masjid. I mean, when the masjid services are available, fine, we can grab them. But uh, that when a masjid is unable to offer the Salah and the congregation because of the lockdown and the, these tough times that we are living that we can't even pray at home that's problematic that is uh, and we don't find the zeal we don't find the in the intention we don't find the motivation to perform that salah it shows there is something problematic because the prayer is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the environment might help but the environment is not the deciding factor whether we pray or not whether we can pray or not and again I think in previous videos we explained uh, that it's actually accessible to people even without the presence of an imam that you can still pray at night. There are so many ways. There are so many ways you can do that. You can hold the mushaf. You can uh, uh, read whatever you know, even if it's little. You repeat the same verses over and over again and you contemplate them. You spend uh, relatively more time in ruku' and in sujood. And the qiyam al-layl, we said, it doesn't have to be just prayer. It could be reciting uh, Quran it could be just making dhikr I mean and there's no one who cannot make dhikr at all no one can't say that like la ilaha illallah or subhanallah everyone can say that so that's part of it as well 
So do whatever you can. And uh, here it's, it's, wor it's, it's actually worth pointing out that uh, although some, some, a number of scholars have said you can follow the online, the prayer online, your local masjid online or another place online. But again, this fatwa is actually has come from a minority of scholars and it's wrong. It really violates some substantial, substantial and foundational uh, foundational principles in fiqh, the fiqh of Salat al-Jama'ah, even if it is the Taraweeh, even if it's the Taraweeh, we have an alternative that you can pray at home, even if you all you know is Qul huwa Allahu Ahad, even if all you know is Surah Al-Fatiha, even if you don't know Surah Al-Fatiha, you, you, you say whatever you know of the Quran and that's it, that's it, so there is, there is a healthy alternative and you can do it. When there's an alternative, we don't need to break and butcher the, the rules, the fiqhi rules and the principles of Islam in order to, um, you know, just go with people, with the over-dependence, the unhealthy over-dependence that we have grown accustomed to, which is complete dependence on the imams and the local masjid to even perform our deeds that are supposed to be between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us seize these nights and benefit from them again there's no time to complain no time to feel bad ramadan days are just you know passing by they're flying so we, we don't want to just wake up at the end of ramadan having missed out on most of it so utilize these nights do what you can exert yourself explore something new and uh, may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh